Hi everyone, welcome to another Canvas and Paint painting tutorial offered by Garden City Arts. My name is Katie Guthrie and I'm going to walk you through the steps of this beautiful painting and give you some tips and tricks along the way. Now, before we get into the actual painting, let's talk about the logistics of this video and kind of some of the supplies you'll need and a few tips and tricks that you can use along the way. Uh, really fast, let's cover supplies first. So, if you purchase the kit, all of your supplies is included except for the brushes. The only brushes that you'll need for this painting would be uh, a large wash brush, a medium shader brush, I think this is a size five, but really whatever brush you have is just fine, and a round brush. You might be surprised by this, but really you don't need a lot of brushes for painting and it doesn't matter if it's not the exact same brush I'm using, you can make it work. Now, you'll also need chalk, which is included in your kit. Um, I also include some popsicle sticks because, you know, if you want to scrape out the paint and mix, these are great. Um, you have a cup in your painting kit, you would need to fill it with water, you need to grab the uh, paper towels, lay them out, and then finally the paint. I have these paint cups labeled one through eight, and you'll want to lay them out on your paper foam plate, or foam plate, sorry, um, in the order that you see them here, one through eight, and you wanna lay them out kind of like the face of a clock, one, two, three, four, five, and then all going all the way around. Um, I will open these cups of paint as we need them, and I'll tell you when we're switching paint and when we're switching brushes in the video. Now, let's talk about some uh, logistics with the video. I am going to break this painting down into several steps. I'm going to demonstrate the step, and then I will put up on the screen the finished painting on the left hand side and the step that we're on on the right hand side. That way you can pause the video and catch up, um, go back and rewatch that previous content if you need to, if you need some uh, more guidance or need to hear it again. And then you just push play and resume to the next step. So that's how the video is structured. Now let's talk really quickly about some tips and techniques that are gonna help you while you're painting. So first, you never use a dry brush when you're painting um, unless you're wanting texture. And this painting does not call for any of that. So instead I'm going to dip my paintbrush in water, pat it dry, and that is called priming your brush. And that gets your brush nice and ready. Second, let's talk about how to um, erase paint. There are methods. You have to, if you want to erase it, you have to hit it before it's dry. So I'm just going to make a little line. Oh no, I didn't want to make that line. So no problem. What you do, you take your brush or a brush that's already clean and you clean it out. Uh, let's talk really fast about cleaning out your brushes in between steps. I swirl my paintbrush in the paint water. Sometimes you want to like bounce up and down. Don't feel like you have to be dainty with your brushes. No, um, get them nice and clean. Then I tap it on the side of the cup. And when I do that, do you see how I'm pressing against the rim? So all that extra water gets out. That's important and then pat it dry. Swirl, tap, and dry. Now, I can come in here and I can erase this whole thing by scratching back and forth. That little scratchy back and forth motion, that will lift up paint. Now, it'll also get your brush dirty, so you'll have to clean out your brush if you have a big mistake like mine, and you just go back and forth and you can erase it, okay? Now, obviously, there's still little areas left behind um, you can take a paper towel and continue cleaning up. But the idea is to get it as soon as you possibly can with a wet paintbrush. And if you, for instance, like this spot, but you didn't want any of that else, um, other stuff, then you just take your brush and you move it back and forth and push the paint into that area, okay? So that is the idea behind erasing. Now, if erasing doesn't work, and you can see it didn't work completely for me, so I'm having to go back in with my brush. I talked too long, oh no. So if, this is a good example of, um, this is a good, good problem for us to solve. So if your paint dries before you can erase it, no problem. Paint covers paint. Remember that phrase in your head. It's not a big deal, we'll paint over it. So 
those are some tips and tricks. Um, I'll talk to you about hold, how to hold your brush and how to use the paint as we proceed. So I'll give you more tips and tricks throughout the video. But basically you have all the logistics out of the way. So now let's go okay. ahead and get started. Step number one. Step number one, uh, this is a nice easy step. We are just establishing the background and we're kind of warming up and kind of, uh, yeah, uh, loosening up is a good term. So with painting, you wanna be kind of loose at the beginning, get big areas of paint, and then you tighten up and get more controlled as you move forward. We're gonna be going from the background to the foreground today. So the first thing we're doing is the kind of atmospheric foggy background that is something I always think of when I think of fall. I'm gonna take my brush, it's already primed and ready to go, and I'm going to grab some of color number one. And that is this kind of yellowish gold color. Um, now, I am going to mix a little bit of water into my paint. The more water you mix into your paint, the more transparent it becomes. We're painting on a tan canvas, so I'm going to let my really light water, I'm gonna start with that. And you'll notice that I'm not doing a whole bunch and some of my tans popping through. I want that. I want the lightest part of my canvas to be in the middle. I want it to look like it's glowing, okay? So after I have a little bit of transparent paint in the middle, I'm gonna grab straight from the cup so it's um, not as wet. Uh, the thicker the paint and less water you use, the more opaque it is, which means you can't see through it. Then I'm going to turn my brush to its thinnest point rather than my thickest, okay, thinnest. And I'm going to go up and down on my canvas right along where I left off and lay that paint in, just in a little strip. I'm going to do it on both sides. So we have to kind of have like a mirrored look. The center is the starting point and then as it comes out, it changes and it reflects each side. The left side looks the same as the right side, it's symmetrical. Okay, so I have that done. Now I can turn my brush to the thickest part and I can br keep bringing my really thick opaque paint out to the edges. Now, if your paint is fighting you a little bit, you can mix water into your paint it will make it more fluid and easier to work with, but you want to be careful not to go overboard because remember, if you mix too much in, then it makes it transparent and see-through, which is good when you want that, but when you don't want that, not so good. Okay, so I have closer to my edges, not all the way there yet, so it's perfect time to switch color and I am not even going to wash out my brush. Instead, I'm gonna just grab my orange and I'm gonna put a line, turning my brush to the thinnest point, I'm gonna put a line right in where I left off. Do you see that? Okay, now, there's a very distinct line. There's no transition or blending. What I have to do is I keep my brush at its thinnest point and I move the orange, the new color we're introducing, into the yellow and then I can move that yellow into the orange. Now I have a fairly good transition, okay? So to blend wet on wet paint, you have to move one paint into the area of another paint and kind of like let those two paints come together and talk and then they'll make like a middle ground and that is how you get that faded look, that blended look or gradient. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm starting outside of the yellow and then I work my way into the yellow now sometimes this doesn't work the way you want it to. If that's the case, you can always grab maybe a little bit of yellow and start a little bit in the yellow and work your way into the orange, okay? So remember, um, everybody paints differently, everybody has different problems to solve, so don't get frustrated, just keep going until you kind of get a good hang of it. Now I'm just gonna fill in my sides with orange paint. If, uh, if I want to have it be a bit more transparent on the edges to let some of the tan show through, I can. I don't think with this painting that it needs to be perfect and solid. In fact, I think the imperfections in the background are more interesting. It's a tree. It's a, a sunny spot. <laughs> like you can really justify just about anything with this painting. And remember it's the background. 
we're going to put a whole bunch of stuff on top of it so it's okay if it's not perfect okay so i'm pretty happy with my background i could probably go in if you don't if you're not happy with your background there's something that you can do you can always take uh start in the middle take a really transparent layer of paint and use the broad side of your brush and just kind of give it a little bit of a glaze that helps sometimes even things out so if it's too uh, if there's lines that aren't blended, if it just feels a little too uh, stark of a, a contrast or a change from the yellow to the orange and you want kind of some in-between colors, then take a really transparent layer of paint and work on those uh, transition areas. Okay, I'm done. I'm going to swirl tap and dry my brush and I'm going to pause the video or put up the screen so you can pause the video if you need to and then we'll move on to step number two. Okay, we're ready for step number two. We're gonna continue working in the background for now, and then step number three, we'll start adding some foreground elements. So, uh, first step, you can use the same brush, but we're gonna be using it at its thinnest point to make really nice thin lines for our trees. Um, we're gonna go ahead and open up paint number three in your painting kit, and we're gonna be using really transparent paint to start off with. We're gonna be practicing a little bit. So transparent paint, again, to get transparent paint, you need to mix water into it, remember? And then I'm gonna start just by adding some really small, thin lines in the background. And these guys can just taper off and kind of disappear into the background. And if you feel like you have too much paint on your brush, I do, then you can swirl, tap and dry your brush. And you can use less paint there we go to get really transparent lines. You don't have to have a whole bunch of them. I may have overdid it, but you can grab just a few. Okay, so those are for like the trees that are really far into the background. The ones that, um, you know, if you're walking through the forest, they're further away. They're still there, you can see them, but they're just hints of trees as opposed to actual trees. Now, as I move forward into my tree line, I'm going to get bigger. So the ones that are closer to us are a little bit bigger. And I'm going to make them a little bit more solid as well. So thicker paint, less, less water, more paint. And remember, trees are gnarly, so they don't have to be perfect and straight. And then once you get to a certain point, you can start breaking them off. Now remember, trees don't generally have 90 degree angles. They have smaller than 90 degree angles. These angles are called acute. So they're cute little angles that we're gonna put on our tree. Z, trees, sorry. We want more than one tree. So I'm just going to throw in some trees. And again, the ones that are closer to us are a little bit bigger, so maybe we see more branches. The ones in the background were just straight, straight trees. These guys are closer and so therefore we see more branches and more details on them. And once you have a few of these guys, and remember they also need to be thicker, they're not just a single line, you make them more substantial. Once you have a few, you can call it quits. I'm going to do just one more kind of going off my canvas. It's important to have things going off. And then I'm gonna use the edge of my brush, just one corner, and I am going to dot on some leaves. Now, this can be really complex, or this can be super simple. You go to the uh, top of your canvas, and wherever your tree branches leave off, and you do just a whole bunch of dotting. See how I'm doing, just a bunch of tapping? I'm using, again, the edge of my a brush and I don't have to stay just around that little point I can spread out I it I've seen this before with people painting they're really hesitant to go out because they think oh there's nothing there no there's a whole bunch of little teeny tiny branches that we don't see that we're just imagining okay trees are big they are fluffy and they branch out so it's important to do the same with your leaves and then maybe in the background since my paintbrush is running out of paint 
I can just do a few little background leaves and hints of leaves in the background. And again, it doesn't have to make perfect sense. It's okay if they're not connected. We can let our minds do some imagining. Remember, try not to go too crazy like your teacher just did. Okay, and that's it. That's step number two. That's all we have to do. Then you can swirl, tap, and dry your brush, finish up your trees, finish perfecting them, and then we'll move on. Okay, so we did kind of a, a more complicated part on step number two. Now we can relax and go back to a simpler part. Step number three is quite easy. We're gonna take color number four, which is a darker brown, and we're going to establish our ground. So, so far we've only been working in the sky in the background. Now we're gonna put in the ground, and that's gonna be kind of our mid ground on which our truck sits on. Now, your trees, Look at where they end. If they end pretty high, no worries. Put your ground starting wherever the trees end. My trees come down quite low, so I'm going to make a little hill. I'm using the top edge of my brush to make a line, and then I'm going to use the side edge to paint and fill in. We're still using the same brush. I use this brush a lot, especially at the beginning of paintings. So again, top of the brush to draw your line, and then everything below that line gets painted with this dark brown and I start right at the ground and then I bring it down. Now as I come down, this is up to you. You could keep it all dark. It might look a little different than the picture if you do it this way. Or you can transition in, take a step back, transition into the light, lighter version of the brown. This is actually called uh, burnt sienna. The other brown is burnt umber. Okay, so the darker brown is burnt umber. So you start off with that and then you just move into the burnt sienna. And basically what you're doing is you are making a solid ground. Now there's one more part that we need to do for step number three. I think we're on step number three. And that is to put in the road. So once I have a good ground, I'm gonna swirl tap and dry my brush and we're gonna revisit a color we've already used. We're gonna grab that yellow that we first started off with. That is the perfect color to put in the hint of a road. Now, this road needs to be sizable. Um, also in your cheat sheet, uh, sorry, in your kit is a cheat sheet. It has a tracing of my, from my original painting. Your truck is gonna be about that big, so, you want to make sure that your road is huge because your truck has to sit on your road. So the road takes up almost the entire canvas. I'm going to start in the middle with the first color number one paint. It's that yellow paint. And I'm going to start in the middle. I'm using my brush, kind of uh, the top part of it, but I am have it turned to its broadest part and then I'm going left and right. And this gives me the hint of a road. And then you wanna come out, kinda of angle your road. Do you see that, how I'm drawing some lines in there? Uh, you wanna angle your road. You don't have to draw the lines in though, cause this is a country road. There's no straight lines in the country. So I'm just gonna go over that and kinda of rough it up. And this color is basically just lightening up the area where our road is going to be so that it looks like a dirt road and the light is catching the dirt road. Okay. Once you have that done, you are finished with step number three. Um, now, make sure you swirl, tap, and dry your brush. We actually won't need this big brush for a while because we're gonna start getting into the small dainty parts. We are now going to start on the truck because we have our background, we have an environment for this truck. Before we can do that, your background and your ground, the mid ground, have to be dry. So you can um, take a break, go grab yourself a drink, relax, stretch, or if you are impatient like me, you can wave your canvas back and forth, get this nice and dry, and then you'll be ready for step number four. We'll begin that in just a moment. 
Okay, we are back with step number, I think, four. And we are going to whip out our cheat sheet. Um, now, if you did not buy the kit, no worries. What I would suggest that you do is buy some tracing paper and draw out this truck. Very simple, it's broken down into simple shapes. You start with a rectangle, you put on a really thin rectangle, add some wheels, add uh, kind of a half of a square, make everything round, don't have any corners, and add two little um, side mirrors. And then just kind of follow along, maybe pause the video right here so you can um, follow along and trace or copy what I have here. Um, now, tracing paper is really easy to use. What you do is you flip it over so that you can no longer read the words. They're now backwards. You take your chalk and you go along your black lines. You only, you don't have to color everything in, you can just fill in um, chalk where there's black lines. Uh, when I get to the words, I do just make it easy on myself and just fill it in like that using the side of my chalk. But once you have uh, your lines chalked up, you flip it over so that you can now read the words and you place your cheat sheet where you feel like it should go. I'm gonna place mine kind of low on my canvas, almost to the very bottom. And then what you'll wanna do is tape it in place. And you should have some tape, some masking tape that attached to your cheat sheet in your kit. Tape it in place and then use the back end or the butt of your brush to apply pressure to the lines. And basically what happens is that chalk transfers onto your canvas. Now, we don't need to trace out everything. The welcome fall and all of these little details like the headlight, um, tail lights, sorry, um, really aren't necessary. What we need to do is the outline of our truck, so all of the parts, and we need to do the pumpkin. You don't have to do all the details inside the pumpkin, but just do the outline. So the outline, when I say that, I'm referring to the, the uh, contour line that uh, goes around the object, not the details inside the object, okay? So I'm going to do the contours of the pumpkin, and then I'm gonna put down all of these parts. So I wanna make sure that I have the tailgate. Also, you might wanna check and make sure it's transferring. Sometimes it transfers better than, than other times. Try pushing harder if you're not getting much of a transfer. The other thing could be that you need more chalk. Okay, if you didn't do a good job chalking, you won't have a good transfer. So, get all of those parts, the tires, the side mirrors, the tailgate, the bumper. Um, remember all of the other details we don't need for now. Just all of those. Then you can take your cheat sheet off. Now it's gonna be hard to see on the video, but my lines did transfer, but I just need to go over them and make it easier for myself to see it so that when I go and paint this in, I'm not second guessing myself. Okay, don't second guess yourself. Make it easy on yourself. Make sure you have a good idea and a good game plan. Uh, remember, you can always fix anything that you're not completely happy with. Maybe you don't wanna do a pumpkin. Maybe you wanna do something else. That's cool. Put whatever you want in that trunk. Okay, so. Once you have your outline, now we can finally start painting. Remember, it's just a basic outline. We're not doing any details. We're painting in the solid blue truck, okay? So we're avoiding the pumpkin and we're avoiding the tires and the bumper. We're only doing the tailgate, the side mirrors, and the cab of the pickup. I'm gonna open up color number five. This is just a nice teal. And I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush. I'm gonna switch to my shader brush. First time using it, so I'm gonna prime it. And then I am going to start by outlining things. I'm gonna use the top edge of my brush, the very top. So when I am basically perpendicular to the canvas, I'm using the very top edge and not the side. Just like when we drew the horizon line for our ground, I'm gonna use the top edge. Now, when you go over the chalk, it disappears, which is why we use it but it can also dry out your paint really bad. So what I suggest doing is making sure that you are mixing some water into your paint every once in a while. Not a ton, it doesn't need to be transparent, but it does need to go over and cover up that chalk a little bit easier. And so I just go over my lines 
I am outlining my tailgate. I'm just gonna outline this really fast and then pause the video so you can just, or put up the pause screen, I should say, so you can pause the video and go about this at your own pace. But I am just gonna outline the cab of the pickup. I'm outlining around the pumpkin. I don't wanna cover color in. That is super important not to color into the pumpkin, okay? Um, yeah, that will be hard to fix, so don't do that. Um, uh, let's see, oh boy, I'm gonna fix. As you go, step back, take a look at your truck. Is it making sense? I just lost a side mirror because my truck is not uh, wide enough on that side, so I'm gonna have to fix it. I'm gonna add my side mirrors. And now I have everything outlined. My cab, my side mirrors, and my tailgate. Now this is when you can use the side of your brush to paint in. Um, for this big tailgate, I highly recommend switching to a bigger brush, get it done. Uh, you might have to do two layers of paint. Whenever I do two layers, I always let it dry and then add a second layer. So basically start from the top and work your way down to the bottom, paint it in solid, come back and do the exact same thing top to bottom and you will have a nice solid blue truck. So I'm gonna hit up, put up the pause screen, uh, let you work at your own pace and then we will continue in just one second. All right. Okay, we are back with step number five. We should have a solid blue truck at this point. Now, this is where we're gonna start adding the details of our truck in order to um, make it look a little less flat, a little bit more like it has some shape. So, we are gonna take color number six. It is a darker version of what you painted your tr uh, pickup truck. And then we're going to use uh, color number seven to make a lighter version of color number five. I know that might be confusing, so let's just focus on that really fast. So I'm gonna break open step number six and step number seven. This is where your popsicle stick might come in handy. I'm gonna take a little bit of pipe, paint number five, what we just used to paint the pickup truck. Then I'm gonna take a little teeny tiny bit of white. So it's about one fourth white and about three fourths of the blue and I'm mixing it to make a lighter version. Um, you don't wanna to be too extreme, but you also wanna make sure that there is a noticeable difference. Uh, if you need to, you can slowly add a little bit of white just to visually see a bit more of a difference. Shouldn't be like white or off-white. It should definitely still be a teal color. Okay, just a lighter version. Great, so we have our lighter version of teal. Now we can turn our attention back to our truck. I'm gonna continue using my shader brush because this is all about the small details at this point. So I'm still using the top edge of my brush and I'm turning my brush to its thinnest point and I'm going to start by working inside the tailgate. So we're gonna take some of the dark version of our blue truck and we're gonna make a smaller what looks kind of like table, a table. It has a straight line on top and then two little lines on either side inside our tailgate. And that is just going to give it some dimension. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put in a straight line. It should not go all the way across, okay? So do you see where the pumpkin ends? It should be maybe just a little bit past where the pumpkin ends, but not much. And it should be a little bit straighter than what I made, but that's okay. If it's not perfect, no worries. I'll show you how to fix it. And then you put two little lines coming down on either side. Perfect. Now, we wanna do a little bit of blending. So, we're gonna take the side of our brush and we're going to bring some of the dark paint into the blue. Your truck will still be a little wet. If it's not, no worries, just take a little bit of that previous color and you can use it to blend. We want the lines to be really obvious, but then, you know, like the inside, we can fuzz up that line and make it a little softer and make it seem like it's just a little darker, okay? So hard edges on the outside and then kind of fuzzy and fades into the inside. Then I'm going to take my dark color 
and you might need to switch to a round brush for this. I'm going to use my shader brush because I like the shader brush better, but you might need to use the round. I'm going to mix a little bit of water into my dark teal color and I'm going to start outlining. Do you remember the cheat sheet? I'm going to outline all of my solid lines on the tailgate, the cab, and the side mirrors. All of the outlines, not anything inside around the pumpkin, just the outline. So I'm going to do that really fast. I'm going to go super fast so it might look a little sloppy. Um, you have the advantage of taking your time and not going too fast. I'm using my shader brush and I'm just changing the, um, the way I hold it as I outline. Again, the round brush might be an easier thing for you. Um, everybody's different, so do what works best for you. Now I am actually going to switch to the round brush at this point because these little side mirrors offer a little bit of a problem. When you're painting curved lines, it's better to just use the round brush even if you hate it. Okay, so I have just outlined my truck in a dark line. Now I can come in and the cab of the pickup I can paint a darker color around where the pumpkin is. It'll help make it stand out a little bit. And I'm leaving the tailgate alone. I'm not painting that anymore at this point. Not yet anyway. Okay, so now I have the dark. Now I can swirl, tap and dry my brush. And I'm gonna start worrying about that tint that we mixed up, this light color. I want to make the sides of my tailgate look like they are a little bit rounder. So what I do, make sure that you don't have too much water in your brush, I did, and so now I have kind of a, a mess on my canvas. Um, I'm going to put just a little hint of a highlight right in the middle of the bumper. I can do it a little bit on the top of the tailgate. And let's see, I also am gonna do it on the top of the cab. You can kind of go over the outline that you made or right along it. Um, this helps maybe blend in a little bit so it's not such a hard defined line. And then I'm going to put it on my side mirrors, right on the tops of them. Okay, I want just a little bit more on the sides of my cab. And if you notice as this paint starts drying, it's not bright enough to your liking, you want more of a contrast, more light and less dark, then you could mix a little bit of white into it and then try, try again. Remember, paint covers paint. That's our motto. Paint covers paint. Okay. So once we have those details, we're looking pretty good. Our truck is looking nice. You could come back in if you feel like there's any areas that you wanna fix a little bit, and maybe just darken. Um, maybe the inside detail of your truck didn't turn out exactly how you want. Take your time right now and mess with it. Make it perfect how you want it. Maybe your highlight ran away with you. Mine did. Mine got a little too bright. So I just am gonna come back in with uh, a little bit of my original color of my truck. I'm just going to play around with it till I'm happy. So I'm going to put up the pause screen at this point. Uh, we will move forward in just a moment once we are happy with how everything looks and then we'll move on to the pumpkin. All right. All right, it's pumpkin time. So very first thing, if you didn't clean out your brushes, don't be like your teacher and be lazy and leave your brushes and paint water or on your table full of paint. That's bad, don't do that. So get your brushes, get them nice and clean. And then we are going to jump back to color number two. This was the orange that we used for the background. 
So I'm gonna take some of this color and I am going to paint in my pumpkin. I'm not worrying so much about the stem, but I am going right up to where I left off on my truck and filling it in with orange paint. Now, you wanna think about painting uh, to follow the form. So I'm doing curved lines following the outer edge of my pumpkin and to make it feel more round, what I can do is continue curving, kind of straighten in the middle and then continue curving on the other side, opposite. That gives the illusion of, of um, volume. So you wanna make sure you do this. You also wanna make sure that you paint the bottom edge of your pumpkin, that's important. And once you have an orange pumpkin, what you're going to do is add all of those details. So you can look at your cheat sheet for guidance. I'm gonna use my round brush and I am going to use paint number, let's see, it would have been four, which is that dark, dark brown. And I'm going to paint in the stem and kind of give a little bit of some details uh, on the pumpkin itself. So I'm going to paint in the stem. Once I have the stem painted in, then I can do my lines. And these lines should be nice and curvy. First, you can use it to kind of outline. Remember, mix a little bit of water into your paint if you need. You can even make your own color. I like to take the orange and mix just a little bit of brown into it for this step. And what happens is it makes kind of a, a nice, um, darker version of that color, but not too dark. And I apologize for that sound in the background. My dogs are being um, rather playful this morning and, you know, interrupting the video. So apologies for that distraction. Um, just gonna outline the pumpkin itself. If you feel like that is too light, that color we mixed up, no worries. Just uh, go back to the original brown. And I'm just going to add some lines coming down. See these curved lines? You can refer to your cheat sheet for these lines if you need to. Um, and put those in. Okay. So the stem should be nice and dark. As it goes away from the stem, that's when you can use some more like of that uh, paint that we mixed up, where we mixed uh, the orange and the brown together. If you wanna do that, you don't have to. And then you'll have a really nice pumpkin. Now you can go back and add some details. For instance, you know, the yellow would be a really good highlight to put on your pumpkin to make it feel just a little bit more pumpkin-esque. Um, you could also use the uh, Burnt Sienna, which was color number three. And this is a good color to use to maybe make the edges a little darker. You can put a whole bunch of detail into this pumpkin if you want. I didn't in my original painting, but I just wanted to show you that the possibility is there. You know, you're working at home, you're working at your own pace, so you can have fun and make your pumpkin look really spectacular. Um, and more detailed. So there's that option. Once you're happy with your pumpkin, we'll move on. I'm gonna throw up the uh, pause screen so you can pause the video, work at your own pace. And then we're gonna move on to the rest of our car so that he is no longer floating. All right, be right back. Okay, we're ready to move on. We now need to do the tires and the bumper. Now, I did not mix up gray for you and your kit. You have to do that by yourself but it's easy, no worries. So take color number eight and color number seven, which technically aren't colors, they're white and black, and you're going to use the black for your tires, and then you're going to mix up the colors for the bumper. So we're gonna take uh, a very small piece of black, and then we're gonna take a really big glob, about twice the size of white. So that's gonna be the first color that we use. We're gonna make kind of a, um, middle of the road gray. So this is a medium 
gray. Now, this medium gray is gonna be the um, accent color, it's gonna be the shadows on your bumper. Now, you're going to take a little teeny tiny bit of that, lay it in a new place on your palette, and grab another glob of white, and then this is gonna be a light gray. So we have a medium gray and we have a light gray now. So once you have a medium gray and a light gray, you're good to go. That's all you need. See how easy that was? So again, I'm just gonna say it real fast. Little teeny tiny pit, uh, about one fourth part, one part black, so one fourth black, and three fourths or three parts white for the medium gray. Then you take a little tiny bit of medium gray and a whole nother helping of white and mix it to make a light gray. Okay, and that's it. So you have your two grays and your black and your white. That's all you need to complete your truck. Can't forget about the taillights. We'll do those two next. <laughs> so I am going to take my shader brush. I'm gonna use the light gray first and I'm gonna paint this guy in solid. So you can outline him just like before. So outline with the top edge of your brush, fill in with the side of your brush. Make sure you go right up to the cab, but you don't go past it. Sorry, right up to the tailgate, but you don't go past it. And make sure it's nice and even on both sides. Okay, once you have that outlined and filled in solid, we're gonna move on to the tires. We're gonna do the tires next, and they are going to be black. Okay, I'll fix that later, but yeah take a little bit more care and time than I am. I'm rushing a bit. So we have the bumper in. Now I'm gonna swirl tap and dry my brush and I'm going to do the black. We're giving the bumper a little bit of time to dry and then we'll come back and do some stuff to him. Now make sure you have your tires underneath. Like look at where your cab is. Make sure the tire is underneath the cab. It should not go out past the cab. And this shape is kind of a trapezoid. I'm painting my tire in solid black. You can come back and add some details to it. Maybe make some, um, add some of the medium gray. You don't have to do that by any means, but if you uh, are not enjoying the black, stark black tires, then yeah, by all means, add some details, just like we did to the pumpkin. Okay. All right, we have the tires. Now we're gonna swirl, tap, and dry our brush and turn our attention back to the bumper. We have that medium gray that we haven't used. I'm going to start on the bottom edge of my bumper and I'm just gonna put, see how I'm kind of starting with an outline using the top of my brush and then I tap in and spread the paint to about halfway up the bumper And voila, you have the bumper. Now you could take straight white and kind of go over the top of the bumper to add a highlight. Uh, you probably have noticed we are putting um, highlights on the tops of most of our objects that we're painting today. And kind of uh, more shadowy on the bottom. That's a general rule of thumb. That's how you paint. Not always, but that's a generally. Okay, so we have this all done. Only thing we need to do now is paint a white sign um, license plate so that we have a place to put fall. Now, you don't have to by any means paint fall, welcome fall, the phrase that I have. Uh, I, oh man, I'm trying to think. I've taught this class, uh, this painting before in class. And I've had some really creative ideas. Um, last names, um, wedding dates, all sorts of stuff. So I leave it to you to decide what to paint. And now we have a finished truck. Now we can turn our attention to the words. The words are a little bit more complicated. We're going to stop this step for now, count ourselves as done. We did a lot of work. But we're gonna move on to um, the final step. We will put on the lights because I forgot to do that and then we'll put on the words so 
Uh, we're gonna let this canvas dry. We wanna make sure everything's dry before we move on because if you want to use Welcome Fall, then you will put the cheat sheet back on and trace your lettering. Um, or if you choose to use the chalk to put on your own uh, words or, or phrase, you can do that. Either way, your canvas has to be dry in order for the chalk to work. So let's let our canvases dry and then we'll come back and continue with our next step in just a moment. Okay, very last step. All we have to do is some details on our truck and we're finished. So again, you can refer to the cheat sheet if you want to. You can make sure to really chalk up your cheat sheet. Like just put so much chalk on there, it's ridiculous, okay? And then you're gonna lay it on. Line up your truck as best you can. Uh, my truck, I went a little crazy, so mine's going to have to be a little different maybe than the original, and that's okay. Um, just make sure that it's lined up to where you want it to be. Tape it down, and then use the back edge of your paintbrush to apply pressure to transfer the words. Now, the fall <laughs> will not transfer because you are transferring white chalk onto white paint. I just realized... So uh, yeah, not gonna work out so well, but that's okay. You can um, hand draw that in. Once you feel comfortable using a paintbrush to make letters, you'll get the hang of it and you'll be just fine. Um, I'm just gonna quickly finish. Oh, there we go, I have a good transfer. The more chalk, the better. So um, let's talk about what color to use for the Welcome Fall. We're going to take color number six. That's the dark teal and we're gonna take a little bit of black and we're gonna make a shade of that color okay shade of uh, the color is basically when you add black to it to make it darker um, I want to make sure that I have enough black that it stands out but enough teal that it still looks teal ish okay so it's a good balance you can just continue adding colors until you get the right until you're happy with it um, just make sure that it stands out because we don't want it to mix into the background or the color of your truck. And then let's talk really fast and practice just a little bit um, with making lines. I'm gonna move this color over here and I'm gonna show you right here. So first you wanna start off with a clean damp brush. You wanna make sure you control the amount of water that's in your brush. And you just take a little tiny bit of uh, water from your paint, mix it into your paint kind of on the side and then it's all about how much pressure you apply. If you press light as a feather, barely touching the canvas, it's gonna be a really thin line. If you press harder, you see how it's a much thicker line. Now, you can use the round brush, that's what I would suggest. If you really hate that brush, you could try the shader brush, but it's gonna be more difficult, especially with those curvy lines. So I'm going to go ahead and start painting in my welcome. Uh, make sure that you have enough paint that it's not transparent and you just slowly go over your chalk lines, trying to put as le less pressure on as possible. Um, once you're done with your welcome, you can turn your attention to the license plate, and I'm just gonna quickly paint in fall. Remember, if you run out of paint, you probably will to reload your brush every once in a while. Um, remember the trick that I showed you at the beginning where you can erase? This is a really good trick to know on this step, okay? Now, let's turn our attention to those tail lights. Very last thing you have to worry about. I'm going to take a color that might surprise you. I'm going to take the red-brown, I think it was color number three, and I'm going to paint a little oval. Make sure you don't have too much paint in your brush. I just did. I'm going to paint a little oval right there. And a little oval right there on the other side. Make sure they're on both sides. And then if you want it to be a little bit brighter, you can use that orange paint to just go on top and paint like a reflection. And there we go. 
So go ahead and finish up the lettering. I'm gonna put it on the pause screen. And then when you're finished, you're done. Good job. You did a wonderful job with this painting. Um, please share your paintings with us at Garden City Arts. We would love to see them. And you can do that by emailing us or messaging the gallery. And I hope you have a really wonderful rest of your day. Thanks so much for painting along with us. See you later. Thank you for watching this Garden City Arts video. Please help us thank our generous sponsors.